When stripping the wire, we want to start with a nice clean cut, which I've done here. To get the outer jacket off, we have an outer jacket that's made out of rubber, and then we've got two conductors inside. We've got, there's one conductor on the other one side, and the other conductor's on the other side, so there's two conductors. This white stuff is string that helps keep the cable round. Now to open it up, I'm going to use one of these box cutters. It's a new blade. I like working with sharp blades. They're actually safer. What I'm going to do is take the wire and fold it over and make the outer shielding stretch on the outside. And simply take the blade and gently apply a little pressure and slice, but it literally wants to split open now because of the, of the stretching action from the folding. I stop, I turn it over, I do the same thing again, and again, it simply wants to split open. Last time, and pop, there it goes. I just pull it off, and this, and twist this together into one contact. Then we have our two other wires that we're going to need to strip as well. For this one, I'm going to use a wire stripper. Close the blade. Pinch the wire and pull. I pinch the wire here and you'll notice that I'm going to push with my thumb while holding the rest of the wire with my hand. Comes right off. And then we have our three leads that we're going to solder. You see here that this one's got a red inner sleeve and this one's clear. So that's how we can tell the difference between the two. Here are the parts to our female connector. This goes in here. It's down just like that. It gets pushed in all the way. There's the connector. This clamps onto the wire itself as part of the strain relief. It fits in here just like so. And then this is the actual strain relief which screws on. And as this screws on, the shape of the cone inside here against these prongs tightens itself and clamps onto the cable. Now, the catch here is that this wants to be put onto the wire before you do the soldering. And in a perfect world, you want to put this on before you do the stripping. Because for me to get this on now, I'm probably going to screw these up. But I'm going to give it a shot but I may have to restrip the wire. But I can't tell you how many professional sound technicians and electricians have accidentally soldered the whole thing together and forgot to put this onto the cable. And if you meet any sound technician who, who denies it, they haven't been working the business very long. Because I have not met one that um, has never done that. So there are connectors. I'm going to put this on here. Like I said, I'm probably going to screw up the... There we go. No, not too bad. I can work with this. You see we have pin number one right there. Number two is on that side and number three is here. And it's very important for these to match the other end. Now when in doubt, if you're not sure what color is on the cable, go to what pins. Simply unscrew the other end. Here is the male end. Take a real close look. We've got pin 1 is on this side, pin 2 is on that side, and pin 3 is at the bottom. See the numbers at the base of the pins? 
and we turn it around, we'll see the pin 2, which is on this side, comes through and is connected to the red wire. And the middle pin, pin 1, is connected to the clear wire, and pin 1 is connected to the shielding, or the ground. If you take a look at that soldering job, this is done by the folks at the factory. This is a professionally soldered connector, and we're going to see if we get it close. What we want to do is we want to tin this. I'm going to take some solder, and the way that I do this, there are several different techniques. You can use one of these handy dandy clips, which is actually makes life a lot easier. But another way that, that you can get away with this is that if you're good with chopsticks, you can move these around. Take a look at this. We can take our soldering iron, simply connect it like so, and add solder to the wire. The solder iron is conducting the heat. I'm simply doing this like so. You want to make sure when you tin the wire that it's straight because you want to tin a straight wire. You don't want to tin curves. Unless you really need to turn tin a curve, you could. Contact. Heats it up. An instant tinning. You can do that with a back, black background. Hope you'll see this a little better. I've tinned my last one. Right here. Heat it up. Buy some solder. Gonna run into the wire. And then there we go, it's tinned. So that's tinning our wires. Now a method of holding our con conductor or our connector um, is I use one of these spring clamps. They're very inexpensive, but they come in handy for lots of different uses. I'm going to spring clamp it, and it adds like a little tripod, so it's not going to fall over on me. And this way I can connect my wires. So, there's number one on the far side, and there's the number one contact. I'm going to hold these up and set them up. See how well they fit. And they fit right in, just like so. So, what I'm going to do now... I'm going to arrange them so they can stay there, and now I'm going to use my extra hand, which is this alligator clip in a vise. Position these just the way I want them. There we go. So as you can see, the alligator clip is holding the wire, and the spring clamp is holding the conductor. Now for the soldering. Because I now have both hands free, it makes it much easier to do our, our work. And sneaking on this side with the soldering iron, get some heat going, stick our solder on the other side, and simply fill the cup with solder. Take it away, and now the wire is clamped in there. Sneaking this other side from the back. Careful not to burn yourself. Putting a bunch of solder in that cup. And boom, it's done. And now I'm going to reposition it to get to the last one. Turn this around a little bit more. I'm going to put some white paper underneath, see if it's a little easier to see. Coming from the top of the solder, in the front of the solder iron. A hard to control that way.
there we go. I'm going to solder in the cup. Little bit of solder over there, a little sloppy. Dress that up a little bit. As long as the tester proves okay, that probably that wouldn't be a problem. Take a good look at our soldering connectors connections. These look very nice. And the clamp right in. We have our connector housing and then lines up the notch there lines up to this notch there push it in so it's in and then start screwing this on and this will tighten that cable clamp right around the cable and here's our connector now we're going to test it okay. turn it on that blinking light there that you see means it's on. To me, it's not blinking. It's just steady. Because of the video rate of the camera, it looks like it's blinking to the video. Then on one, this and the other. You see these lights here. You press reset to get rid of those lights. And now we have three lights that are on. Pin one goes to pin one, pin two to pin two, pin three to pin three. And that's how you put on a connector.